Australia. Australia. And welcome to another episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle show with the team dedicated to styling the life you live. Simply by telling you exactly how to live it. It's great to be your company tonight. And who knows, we might just hold that tip you need to change your life. I'm Life Support's modern woman Sigourney and tonight I'll be showing all you ladies the benefits of doing some volunteer work in your local hospital's rehabilitation ward. I'm Penny and I'll be teaching you about real life. A little later on I'll be enlightening you as to how to repaint a room in a very stimulating and community spirited way. Dr Rudy here. In my men's health segment I'll be revealing the very latest natural cure for impotence. Can you afford to miss that? No, I wouldn't think so. I'm Life Support's handyman, my name's Todd, and tonight I'll be letting you in on the safest way to enjoy having a pet pit bull terrier. It's a great DIY project. I'll be keeping an eye out for that segment. Yes, we've got all that and so much more. That's right, so let's get stuck in. For the modern woman in high society, the only thing more important than the right dress is the right address. And since you probably don't have the right address, I'm going to show you how to move in the right circles without actually moving. Simply select the most desirable suburb with the crescent you most want to live in and change your stationery and cards to that address. Then go to your local post office, hire a post office box and fill in one of these mail redirection forms. And there you have it. Thanks to busy PAs and lazy PR firms, you'll soon be included in all the smartest balls and parties and known by all the best people. Because your address is now the best address in town. Oh, goody. Of course, you'll never be able to invite anyone to your real house. But with your new address, you'll be too busy to spend any time at home anyway. Happy house hunting party, girl. There's nothing quite like a couple of cleansing ales at the end of a working day. But if you're like me, two quickly becomes four, plus one more for the road. And now the road is your greatest obstacle to home. Getting caught drink driving on our roads is a problem. But if you do get caught, you're a bloody idiot. But if you think before you drink, there is a way to make the drive home without incident. first thing you need to do is place a sensibly dressed dummy in the passenger seat of your car. Someone who looks trustworthy and tutely. Then just stick a sign like this onto the roof of your car. And if you do happen to start swerving all over the road or driving 40 kilometres an hour, no one will take any notice because that's what learner drivers do. And there you have it, a great little DIY if you DUI. So take a tip from Todd and keep a body and a banner in the boot, guaranteed to keep you out of cab fares and court fines. Young guys are still growing up, man. It's just a phase everyone goes through, but the older guys should, should have realised by now, you know what I mean? There's a lot of music students down there and they play the didgeridoo, right? And they say, like, you hear them talking, saying, oh, you know, just circular breathe. So, you know, you get out of it. I don't know if that actually works. And I absolutely reeked of alcohol and stunk of alcohol and I got pulled over. So I just shoved a whole lot of fries in my mouth and put the window down and the officer's just looking at me because I've got fries and everything hanging out of my mouth. And he goes, oh, you didn't turn your, you haven't got your lights on. I said, why? And then he goes, yeah, well, you know, turn your lights on and off you go. And they're safe. I didn't have the fries. He would have smelt it a mile away. The stench of McDonald's has killed it all. <laughs> There's nothing worse than migrating to a pad where the previous tenant was gullible enough to believe that rag finish walls look good and your landlord's not going to pay to have the walls repainted because technically they are freshly painted. You could do it yourself, which would involve expensive paint and back-breaking labour, but if you can't be asked, don't worry because I've found a quick, cheap and responsible way to get that redecorating done. First of all, get hold of a box of spray paint. Make sure you've got the right protective gear. Then just let the local kids know that your place is available as a safe chromie house where you supply the aerosols. 
Most people think that the youth of the nation are just a bunch of lazy, useless bums. But all they really need is the right motivation and the right working environment. So, close all the windows and doors and let your inhalant interior decorators get to it. You probably don't know it, but chroming can create feelings of stimulation, excitement, giddiness and delusions of grandeur, which are all the signs of a good interior decorator. Now, there are a few things you should know before you let anyone do this on your premises. Firstly, make sure you use an enamel paint, which contains the right chemicals. Most brands are clearly marked for your convenience. Secondly, make sure your panting painters start at the top of the walls, because the higher they get, the lower they're going to go. And you don't want to end up with some half-assed, half-finished job, so keep an eye on them. If they look like they're struggling, give them a hand. Move them into the recovery position. Might also be a good idea to put some drop sheets like these down because while you don't want anyone choking on their own vomit, you totally don't want it all over your floor either. And that's all there is to it. Turn your living room from this into this. You get a new look for your living room in half the time and for less than half the price. And you can start building a real sense of community in your hood by letting the kids know that the next time they take a trip, they've got you for travel insurance. See ya. Penny, what a wonderful way to make over a room while helping the youth of today. I think you should be congratulated for giving those young people a safe place to enjoy the foibles of being young people. Really? I would have thought you of all people would have been dead set against it. I'm not that straight, Penny. I've dabbled with some inhaling games myself. Really? Oh yes. I remember, only just, <laughs> this one afternoon, I must have inhaled at least half a bottle of Chanel No. 5. The perfume? How does that work? Oh, it's simple. You just spray a generous amount of Chanel No. 5 into a Prada handbag, and then... Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the stuff. <laughs> that takes me to another place. Yeah? I don't think I'd call it chroming, though. Oh, I don't. I call it Chanelling. You want to go? Nah. Nah, I'm good. But hey, why don't you have another crack at it? While we have a crack at this. How's it? Dr. Rudy here. I get a lot of letters asking me what's the best way to break up with a woman. Well, there are several schools of thought. Some say you owe it to her to do it face to face. Some say you should let her down gently. Whereas I say, bugger that. Think of yourself. The number one thing you need to consider before breaking up is to protect your property. You need to get all of your things out of her place and get her key to your place before she gets wind of your intentions. Then do the actual breaking up in her home. That way, if she becomes violently angry, anything she smashes will be hers. Now, it's also a good idea to do it face to face so there are no misunderstandings. How's it, darling? Fine, Angie. Are you on your way home? Good. See you soon. Bye now. Now, you don't want her to think she has a chance of winning you back. She'll only start stalking you. So you really have to spell it out for her. Now, I've invited a friend over to help me do just that. Oh. Because oh. the best way to let your girlfriend know oh. how you feel oh. is to wait until she's due home one day, then let her catch you having sex with another woman. Trust me, this is the only way to make sure she gets the message loud and clear. I've met someone else. It's not you, it's me. Get out! Get out! And that's all there is to it. Follow my instructions and trust me, she'll never want to see you again. You're a pig! I never want to see you again! Two birds with one stone. I'm on form today. Well, good on you, Barney. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Oh, good, eh? I don't know about the old cliche, but this pit bull terrier really is my best friend. But unfortunately, history has proven that his breed isn't the greatest mate to young children. 
And as a result, there's a whole lot of rules and regulations about owning a pit bull. You have to be over 18 and you have to keep them behind a secure, child-proof fence, etc, etc. And if you do take your dog out of the yard, you have to keep them on a short lead at all times. It's not that much fun going down to the local park and playing frisbee with a dog that's on a short lead. But don't worry, there is a way to let your potentially perilous pup off the leash to enjoy some playtime without you copping a fine. All you gotta do is give your pit bull a makeover. Just glue some breed altering characteristics onto its coat here and hey presto, pit bull terrier to French poodle. Ooh la la. Now, he may not look as tough as Barney, but at least Bernard here can enjoy his freedom and a little bit of a run around. Go on, Bernard. Go on, son. And if your dog does maul a kitty, who would have thought a poodle could be so uncharacteristically violent? So when they tell you you have to have your dog put down, well, the vet will be expecting a poodle. So just take him one. Knowing your baby's home, safe and sound. Come on. Come on. Get in. And that's all there is to it. So take a tip from Todd. A little canine cover-up means you can enjoy a real man's dog. You don't just put a dog down because it bit somebody. Not automatically. you got to know the reason why. Was it being poked and sticked and was it, you know, encouraged to actually fight for his life? I don't like the idea of killing an animal because they've attacked people. It's just like shark, like, you know, when sharks attack people, you know, that's their territory. Killed them, destroyed them, you know, that's it. Underage drinking is becoming a real problem. Licensing laws are stricter, fines heavier, and fake IDs more expensive than ever. So, if you're underage and feel like a night out, there is something you and your mates can do to get you into any pub or club. All you need is one of these. Not only will it guarantee you entry, but with any luck, you and your bridesmaids won't have to pay for a single drink. So there you are, underage rages. Give this a go. And if you're in the mood for a bit of Y chromosome action, don't worry, this doesn't say too late I'm taken, it just says try a little harder. And they always do. See ya. Look at this. Most people think this is a terrible act of wanton destruction of our great Australian real estate heritage perpetuated by a few mentally disturbed young men. But even this cloud of smoke has a silver lining. Research into the psychosexual motivations of the average Aussie baromaniac have produced exciting medical breakthroughs in the treatment of impotence. That's right, men, impotence. Now you don't need to spend money on expensive pills, pumps or prostitutes. All you have to do is start a fire of your own. You see, nothing brings on a rush of blood quite like being responsible for the devastation, drama and media attention of a good bushfire. It means men with small, useless penises now can have something they can be proud of. And once the wind picks up, so will you, knowing that these things can sometimes burn for days. Now, this is an impotence treatment that's 100% effective and 100% natural. As we all know, fire is how the Australian landscape regenerates itself, burning away the old, decaying and ugly and replacing it with the new and more beautiful. Take this for example. This was a typical family home, an unbelievable eyesore from the 70s. But thanks to the fire, it has been burnt to the ground to make way for modern and vastly improved accommodation. And you'd have reduced the number of native pests that are likely to jump out in front of your car at night. Yes, this clean cull has made the road safer for all Australians. And that's something to be proud of. So ladies, if your man comes home smelling of smoke and soiled with soot, you'll know that his little fire hose is now a fire chief and he'll be ready to fan the flames of your desire. So men, if you suffer from being a bit of a soft cock, why not light a bushfire? Bana.
Girls, by now you all know that there is nothing or no one more precious in life than your man. But sometimes, his home habits can just push you to the point where you want to ask him politely if he could please pick up after himself every now and then. But there's no need to get confrontational. He's not likely to change, and girls, he won't take your attempts to change him lightly. But not to worry. I've found the perfect way for you to meet a man that you can change to be exactly the way you want him to be, without him even knowing it. All you have to do is offer up your services as a volunteer in your local hospital's rehabilitation ward. This is where handsome young men who suffer from brain damage are taught to walk, talk and basically function normally again. So while you rehabilitate him, why not reprogram him? Now the first thing you have to do is pick your potential partner. You'll find the nurses are very obliging at helping you find what you're after. This is Marco. He was carjacked for his BMW right across the road from the law firm that he works for. He suffered massive brain damage when he was brutally beaten across the back of his head. Thank God it was the back. I'll take him. Just one foot in front of the other. Well done, Marco. Once you've chosen your man, it's time to start his rehabilitation and reprogramming. Bend all the way down. That's right, we don't leave a wet towel on the floor, do we? That's right, it's all coming back to you now, isn't it? Now, underpants. Near or in the laundry basket? Of course, early on in the relationship, there'll be some things that he can't do for himself, and you'll have to do them for him. So, if you don't like the length of his sideburns, trim them. And his personal grooming needn't stop there. It gives him that smooth athletic appearance and the motivation to start speaking again. Uh. Then it will be time to consummate your physical relationship. And ladies, this is where your efforts can reap the biggest benefits. Remember, he has no idea how to do things or how long to do them for. So simply tell him that it's customary for all lovemaking to commence with at least half an hour of cunnilingus, followed by lovemaking in only the positions you like. It's amazing being able to tell a man what you like and actually have him do it. And to top it off, post-coital conversations will be the best you've ever had. It's not like a full heel and not a stiletto. It's just enough to shape my calves nicely. What do you think? And there you have it, ladies. Help yourself by helping someone else. You can fulfil your Florence Nightingale fantasies and a few other fantasies as well. And as long as his understanding of banking, investing or lawyering eventually come back to him, you'll have made a good long-term investment. And if they don't, the short-term benefits will have been well worth it. Well, Dr Rudy, here we are, second week back, and look at the amount of letters we've already received. Yes, Penny, I think average Australians have been quite stuck with artists. Totally. So if you've got a problem you can't get your head around... Or you simply want a decision made about your life... Why not write in and tell us about it? That's right. Send your letters in to Life Support. SBS Locked Bag 028. Crow's Nest. 1585. And folks, the sooner you get them in, the sooner we can help out. But right now, why don't we take a look at the next segment? One of the best things about living in the land of Oz is that we're surrounded by 20,000 kilometres of coastline that offers up what I think is arguably the best seafood in the world. I mean, aren't we just spoilt for choice? An amazing array of fish and crustaceans and mollusks. But for me, one of the best fruits of the sea is this little gem, Seafood Extender. Now, doesn't that look just tops? Oh, and there it is, that clean sea spray smell and the, the mild, almost sweet accent of the plastic shell. Seafood Extender is available all year round and from all regions in Australia, but in some places it's known as Seafood Stick or Seafood Highlighter. But don't worry when you're asking for it, most fish bungles will know what you're talking about. Now, when you're buying your Seafood Extender, how do you know you're getting the freshest you can buy? Firstly, have a good look at it. The flesh should be clean and white. And the markings along the back here should be of a deep orange colour. Then, give it a gentle squeeze. Now, it should have a little bit of give in it, but not too much. 
and no one enjoys having limp extender in their mouth. But the best way to tell you if your seafood extender is on the go is simply to smell it. Oh, now that's delicious. I mean, it must have only been defrosted this morning. The only way you get anything fresher than that is if you caught it yourself. I'll have uh, half a kilo of the seafood extender, thanks, mate. Now, another thing to try and keep in mind is to buy roughly the same size and weight. This will ensure that your cooking times will be even. Let me drink it, thanks, mate. Oh, and it's cheaper than the chips. Now, stay with me, because I'm about to show you some delicious ways to repair this little treasure from Neptune's garden. So lay your extender down flat with the exposed end facing you and insert your blade at the top here. Slide the blade away from you, down the length of the extender. Oh, there you have it. No bones, no scales, no waste. Now, all you need is a martini glass, a lettuce leaf, and some Thousand Island dressing. A seafood classic. Now, living in a multicultural society such as Australia, means you can enjoy preparing it in a variety of exotic ways. For instance, this Chinese classic of steamed extender with ginger and shallots. And what about this French classic of extender thermidor? And if you're a fan of Japan, why not thinly slice your extender for that sashimi style meal? A versatile, dependable and delicious addition to extend your food repertoire. Enjoy. Oh, Todd, you've simply got to give me the recipe for that fabulous-looking Chinese dish. Yeah, yeah, I could totally tee something up. And if you at home want a recipe for any of the dishes prepared on tonight's show, why not write in for a fact sheet? I know you know the address. Well, I simply can't believe it, but here we are at the end of another show. Yes, and I hope we helped all of you out there at the end of your tether. If we did it, don't worry, because we'll be back next week with more great ideas. Invaluable advice. And top tips. So keep sending in those letters. Because how can we support your life unless we know what's wrong with it? Until then, be good to one another, you hear? And in the meantime, why not learn a language? And remember, we're here for you. Good night, Australia. Australia.